The Royal Albert Hall is an incredibly familiar space to anyone who's been to a prom or watched one on TV. Imagine this arena full of promers and the audience on their plush velvet seats around me. But there is one space in here that is a bit of a secret and it is right up at the top. It's a bit of a trek to get all the way up here to the gallery. Fits up to 500 people. And I can absolutely see why the promers would want to come and watch from up here. Just look at this spectacular view. You can hear the orchestra just warming up for tonight. When you're down there on stage or in the arena and you look up at the gallery, it looks really tiny. But when you get up here, it's actually a really big space. It feels very light and airy. It kind of reminds me of being in a church. So it has a sort of sacred quality to it. Well, I like it up there because I think the sound's better. It's much mellower and uh, more ethereal. There's a better class of people up there, anyway. <laughs> it's very friendly. It's, uh, it's a nice way to experience classical music. But no, for me, it's one of the views that sounded like if we can manage to get a little peek over the... It looks like there's some great views, so that'd be quite exciting. When the Albert Hall opened in 1871, this glass dome was the largest in the world. And I love all of the architectural detail that you get up here in the gallery. These beautiful lampshades and these decorated columns, which look like they're marble, but on closer inspection, turns out they're fake. Something to sit on is very, very useful. And a bottle of water, of course. <laughs> we, got, we haven't got anything to sit on, no, that might be an no, issue. Maybe we'll, we'll work it out. Definitely come with cushions, come with supplies, come with a book for the cube. So I've taken everybody's advice and I've brought some stuff to sit on. I've got a blanket and I also bought a sheepskin rug because I thought that might be very soft. My bum. Uh, and I've got the all-important bottle of water as well. So I think I'm all set and I'm off for my first gallery experience. such a nice atmosphere up here. I think because no one else in the hall can see you, anything goes, really. So people stand up, they lie down, they read books while they're listening. Some people even do their knitting. I find it much more relaxed up here. In, in, that, in my youth, we used to go down into the arena. The sound isn't lost as much as you might think up here. Uh, you can, the singers still project very well. You're not watching yeah. the conductor the whole time and you're not watching the performer's faces mm. and you just get to enjoy the music. Yeah, I like the view you get. Okay, here I am. I found my spot. I'm all set and ready to go. All I have to do now is just lie back and listen to some amazing music. chilled up there, isn't it? Tomorrow, did that bring back some happy memories for you? It did, of uh, my first uh, three years in London, especially the first one when I first joined English National Ballet, and the studios are really next door to the Albert Hall. And in fact, to the point where Daniel Barenboim made that impromptu speech at the end of his ring cycle to thank the audience, and in fact, we can, we can hear a bit of his speech now. The communion between us musicians and you public depends not only on us, but also on you. And you have brought so much silence. <laughs> it is not a joke. <laughs> it was, you listened so quietly and so wonderfully that we really stand in awe in front of you for all that. When you had your work played at the proms, did you want people to be silent? Does it?